Hey guys, this is a continuation of our reading of the book of Jasher. We had uh, Jasher chapter 22 at verse 1. We're going to start off with uh, Will. this young man here has got to break out of here and go uh, open up the store. Got to sell America some schnills. Go ahead, Ethan. Bust it up. I'm right, sorry, Jasher chapter 22. And Ishmael then rose up and took his wife and children and his cattle and all belonging to him. And he journeyed from there, and he went to his father in the land of the Philistines. And Abraham related to Ishmael his son the transaction with the first wife that Ishmael took, according to what she did. And Ishmael and his children dwelt with Abraham many days in that land. And Abraham dwelt in the land of the Philistines a long time. And the days increased and reached twenty-six years. And after that, Abraham, with his servants and all belonging to him, went from the land of the Philistines and removed to a great distance. And they came near to Hebron, and they remained there. And the servants of Abraham dug wells of water, and Abraham and all belonging to him dwelt by the water. And the servants of Abimelech, king of the Philistines, heard, that, heard the report that Abraham's servants had dug wells of water in the borders of the land. And they came and quarreled with the servants of Abraham, and they robbed them of the great well which they had dug. And Abimelech, king of the Philistines, heard of this affair, and he with Phicol, the captain of his host, and twenty of his men came to Abraham. And Abimelech spoke to Abraham concerning his servants. And Abraham rebuked Abimelech concerning the well of which his servants had robbed him. And Abimelech said to Abraham, As the Lord liveth, who created the whole earth, I did not hear of the act which my servants did until, unto thy servants until this day. And Abraham took seven ewe lambs and gave them to Abimelech, saying, Take these, I pray thee, from my hands, that it may be a testimony for me that I dug this well. And Abimelech took the seven ewe lambs from which Abraham had given him, for he had also given him cattle and herds in abundance. And Abimelech swore to Abraham concerning the well. Therefore he called that well Beersheba, for there, for there they both swore concerning it. And they made, and they both made a covenant in Beersheba. And Abimelech rose up with Fy, with with Phicol, and the captain of his host and all his men. And they returned to the land of the Philistines. And Abraham and all belonging to him dwelt in Beersheba, and he was in that land a long time. And Abraham planted a large grove in Beersheba, and he made to it four gates facing the four sides of the earth, and he planted a vineyard in it, so that if a traveler came to Abraham, he entered any gate which was in his road, and remained there, and ate and drank and satisfied himself, and then departed. For the house of Abraham was always open to the sons of men that passed and repassed, who came daily to eat and drink in the house of Abraham. And any man who had hunger and came to Abraham's house, Abraham would give him bread that he might eat and drink and be satisfied. And anyone that came naked to his house, he would clothe with garments as he might choose, and gave him, and give him silver and gold, and make known to him the Lord who had created him in the earth. And this did Abraham this did Abraham all his life. And Abraham and his children and all belonging to him dwelt in Beersheba, and he pitched his tent as far as Hebron. And Abraham's brother Nahor and his father and all belonging to them dwelt in Haran, for they did not come with Abraham to the land of Canaan. And the children were born to Nahor, which Mil which Milcah the daughter of Haran, and sister to Sarah, Abraham's wife, bare to him. These are the names of those who were born to him, Uz, uh, Buz, Kemu, Kesed, Shazo, Bildash, Til Tidlaf, and Bethul, being eight sons. These are the children of Milcah, which she bare to Nahor, Abraham's brother. And Nahor had a concubine, and her name was Ra Ramu Ramua. Ruma, and she also bare to Nahor, um, bare to Nahor, Zabok, Gakash, Takash, Maka, being four sons. And the children that were born to Nahor were twelve sons, besides daughters. And they also had children born to them in Haran. And the children of Uz, the firstborn of Nahor, were Abi, Sherif, Gaiden, Melus, and Deborah, their sister. And the sons of Booz were Bereshel, Namath, 
Sheba, and Madun, Mad Onu. And the sons of Kamul were Aram and Rachab. And the sons of Kasid were Anamalek, Meshai, Benan, Ephi. And the sons of Shazo were Hildash, Mekai, and Ophir. And the sons of Hildash were Arud, Shamum, Mered, and Molok. And the sons of Tid Tidlaf were Mushan, Pushan, and Mutsi. And the children of Bethuel were Shekar, Laban, and their sister Rebecca. These are the families of the children of Nahor that were born to them in, in Haran. And Aram, the son of Kemu, and Reshab, his brother, went away from Haran. And they found a valley in the land by the river Euphrates. And they built a city there. And they called the name of the city after the name of Pathor, the son of Aram. That is Aram Nahariim unto this day. And to the children and the children of Casey also what went to dwell where they could find a place. And they went and they went and they found a valley opposite to the land of Shinar, and they dwelt there. And there they built and they there built themselves a city. And ca they called the name of the city Casid after the name of their father, that is in the land of Casnim until this day. And the Casnim dwelt in that land, and they were fruitful and multiplied exceedingly. And Terah, father of Nahor and Abraham, went and took another wife in his old age, and her name was Pelila. And she conceived and bare him a son, and he called his name Zobah. And Terah lived twenty-five years after he begat Zobah, and Terah died in that year, that is in the thirty-fifth year of the birth of Isaac, son of Abraham. And the days of Terah were two hundred and five years, and he was buried in Haran. And Zobah, the son of Terah, lived thirty years, and he begat Aram, Achilles, and Merik. And Aram, son of Zobah, son of Terah, had three wives, and he begat twelve sons and three daughters. And the Lord gave to Aram, the son of Zobah, riches and possessions, and abundance of cattle and flocks and herds, and the man increased greatly. And Aram, Aram the son of Zobah, and his brother, and all his household journeyed from Haran, and they went to put to dwell where they should find a place. For their property was too great to remain in Haran, for they could not stop in Haran together with their brethren, the children of Nahor. And Aram, the son of Zobah, went with his brethren, and they found a valley at a distance toward the eastern country, and they dwelt there. And they also built a city there, and they called the name thereof Aram, after the name of their old eldest brother, that is Aram Zobah to this day. And Isaac, the son of Abraham, was growing up in those days, and Abraham his father taught him the way of the Lord, to know the Lord, and the Lord was with him. And when Isaac was thirty-seven years old, Ishmael, his brother, was going about with him in the tent. And Ishmael boasted to himself, boasted of himself to Isaac, saying, I was thirteen years old when the Lord spoke to my father to circumcise us, and I did according to the word of the Lord which he spoke to my father. And I gave my soul unto the Lord, and I did not transgress his word which he commanded my father. And Isaac answered Ishmael, saying, Why dost thou boast to me about this, about a little bit of thy flesh, which thou didst take from thy body, concerning which the Lord commanded thee? As the Lord liveth, the God of my father Abraham, the Lord should say unto my father, Take thou thy son Isaac, and bring him up an offering before me. I would not refrain, but I would joyfully accede to it. And the Lord heard the, the word that Isaac spoke to Ishmael, and it seemed good in the sight of the Lord. And he thought to try Abraham in this matter. Mm. And the day arrived when the sons of God came and placed themselves before the Lord. And Satan also came with the sons of God before the Lord. Mm -hmm. And the Lord said unto Satan, Whence comest thou? And Satan <clears throat> answered the Lord and said, From going to and fro in the earth and walking up and down in it. And the Lord said to Satan, What is thy word to me concerning all the children of the earth? And Satan answered the Lord and said, I have seen all the children of the earth who serve thee and remember thee when they require anything from thee. And when thou givest them the thing which they require from thee, they sit at their ease and forsake thee and remember thee no more. Hast thou seen Abraham, the son of Terah, who at first had no children, and he served thee and erected altars to thee wherever he came, and he brought up offerings upon them, and he proclaimed thy name continually to all the children of the earth? Now that his son Isaac is born to him, he has forsaken thee, and he has made a great feast for all the inhabitants of the land, and the Lord he has forgotten. 
for it missed all that he has done. He brought thee no offering, neither burnt offering, nor peace offering, neither ox, lamb, nor goat of all that he killed on the day that his son was weaned. Even now, from the time of his son's birth, till even from the time of his son's birth till now, being thirty-seven years, he built no altar before thee, nor brought any offering to thee, for he saw that thou didst give him, give what he requested before thee, and he therefore. For <coughs> uh, so I think that was fifty-four. Fifty-four. Yeah. And the Lord said to Satan, "Hast thou thus considered my servant Abraham? For there is none like him upon the earth." A perfect and upright man before me, one that feareth God and avoideth evil. As I live, were I to say to him, Bring up Isaac thy son before me, he would not withhold him from me. Much more if I told him to bring up a burnt offering before me from his flocks or herds. And Satan answered the Lord and said, Speak then now unto Abraham as thou hast said, and thou wilt see whether he will not this day transgress and cast aside thy words. <laughs> Boy, I should tell. He said, okay, Pop. I'll talk to him real quick. Let's see what he do. Watch. <laughs> but I said, nah, man. It's my, it's my top dog, man. What are you talking about? He, keep where he, he calling. He said, perfect. And upright. We can be perfect. <laughs> wow. We can be perfect. I'm going to always hold on to that. I don't care what anybody else tell me. Y'all want to recap or keep it moving? Um, I actually want to... Um, Let me recap a little bit. Let's recap. Was this Laban that was born to Nahor? Uh, is that is that uh the same? That ain't. Uh, That's the one that uh is gonna trick jo Jacob with with Leah and right, right, that, right that, in out. the desert when Moses was rolling. Um. Oh Lord. Jacob is before Moses. Jacob is the forefather of. Of Moses. I don't know why I'm thinking about uh, the, the, the the situation. That... You speaking with Joseph? No, I wasn't thinking about Joseph. Okay. I was thinking about uh, Jethro and them. There was somebody in that mix. I don't remember who it was. Uh, the son of uh, the father-in-law of. Uh, that's I'm thinking about Moses. You think about Moses with his um. Um, I know what you're talking when, about. When Moses Jethro. served for. Uh, for Pharaoh? No, sir, seven seven years for uh Oh that's yeah, that's Jacob. That's Jacob. Yeah, that's Jacob with LeBron. Seven years but for for the woman. And yeah. then he had to work another seven years. That's Jacob that did that work? That's Jacob, yeah. You sure? Positive. Okay. Mm -hmm. That's what I was thinking. Yeah. I wouldn't I don't know why the name Jacob won't come into me for that seven years. Did somebody else do seven and seven? Mm -hmm. For for uh the marriedest person? Mm -hmm. That was Jacob? Mm -hmm. I'd go to And that was LeBron. That's the same guy. Because mm -hmm. his father-in-law tricked him yep. and told him he could have all the speckled uh, sheep. When the name came up, I said, yo, it sounds like the same lineage, the way this is. When he, you know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah, bro. There you go. <clears throat> what is it? This, uh, the the smell's coming right it's awesome. It's uh, Genesis 31. Um, I'm gonna start. I'm gonna start where it's uh, where he was about to leave. Cause thirty one, thirty one speaks of where uh, he says where at chapter thirty one at verse one. Yeah, but this whole this whole uh, uh -huh. chapter is speaking about okay. where he was about to leave to take uh his daughter his women back. And he heard the words of Laban's son saying, Jacob has taken away all that was our father's and of that which I was our father's has he gotten all his glory. And Jacob beheld the countenance of Laban and behold, it was not toward him as before. But um, to go back when he went to the journeys for the seven, that's in, um, that's in 30. No, no, no. Cap, that's in 29, verse 21. And Jacob said to Laban, Give me my woman, for my days are right. fulfilled, that I may go in unto her. And Laban gathered all the men of the place and made a feast. 
He said, give me my woman so I can bust some cheeks. That's pretty, <laughs> that's pretty much what he said. He said, give me my woman so that I may go in unto her. That's, that's very, uh, he wanted, he wanted, uh, Rachel, cause he had Rachel, but he hadn't earned her yet. He'd been tricked. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, 40. Yeah. All right. But um, what I, what I did want to recap on was how Abraham was in his house. Let's close it. Hey, let me see that bag before you slide it this way. Okay, you ready? Yep. We're reading back at Joshua chapter 23. And at that, and at that, at that time, the word of the Lord came to Abraham and he said unto him, Abraham, and he said, here I am. And he said to him, take now thy son, thine only son whom thy loveth, even Isaac, and go to the land of Moram, Moriah, mm -hmm. and offer him there for a burnt offering upon one of the mountains which shall be shown to thee. Is this so, Old Testament? Okay. Yeah. Okay. Absolutely. Shown to thee, for there wilt thou see a cloud and the glory of the Lord. And Abraham said within himself, How shall I separate my son Isaac from Sarah, his mother, in order to bring him up for a burnt offering before the Lord? Isaac said, Hey, never mind that I don't want to do it. How do I get him away from mama? Because it's going yeah, down. Because it's mama, Marty. It's crazy. I'm going to do it. I'm going to do it. I'm, I'm trying to figure out the plan. Yeah. How do I said, he said, how to get from the mom? Because the mom's going to be like, um, where's Zach? I know I don't have to. Where's Isaac? Offer her as well. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Abraham came into the tent. And he sat before Sarah, his wife, and he spoke these words to her. My son Isaac has grown up, and he has not for some time studied the service of his God. Now, tomorrow, I will go and bring him to... Shem and Eber, his son. And there he will learn the ways of the Lord. For they will teach him to know the Lord as well as to know that when he prayeth continually before the Lord, he will answer him. Therefore, there, there he will know the way of serving the Lord his God. Whoa, Abraham. <laughs> Wait a minute here, cuz. And Sarah said, Thou hast spoken well. So, my Lord, and do. Yeah, you gotta read that over. And Sarah said, Thou hast spoken well. Go, my Lord, and do unto him as thou hast said. But remove him not at a great distance from me. Neither let him remain there too long, for my soul is bound within his soul. And Abraham said to Sarah, My, my daughter, let us pray to the Lord our God that he may do good with us. And Sarah took her son Isaac and he abode all that night with her. And she kissed and embraced him and gave him instructions till morning. And said to him, O oh my son, how can my soul separate itself from thee? And she still kissed him and embraced him and she gave Abraham instructions concerning him. And Sarah said to Abraham, O my Lord, I pray thee, take heed of thy son and place thine eyes over him, for I have no other son nor daughter but him. O forsake him not. If he be hungry, give him bread. And if he be thirsty, give him water to drink. Do not let him go on foot, neither let him sit in the sun. Neither let, neither let him go by himself in the road, neither force him from whatever he may desire, but do unto him as he may say to thee. Man, and Sarah wept bitterly the whole night on account of Isaac. She knows something is going on. <laughs> She's like, wait a minute. And she gave him instructions till morning. Damn. <laughs> All day. <laughs> <laughs> and in the morning, Sarah selected a very fine Don't and beautiful look. garment from those garments which she had in the house that Abimelech had given to her. And she dressed Isaac, her son, with therewith. And she put a turban to on the bed. And she enclosed a precious stone in the top of the turban. And she gave them provisions for the road. 
And they went forth, and Isaac went with his father Abraham. And some of their servants accompanied them to see them off the road. And Sarah went out with them, and she accompanied them upon the road to see them off. And they said to her, Return to the tent. And when Sarah heard the words of her son Isaac, she wept bitterly, and Abraham, her husband, wept with her. And their son wept with them a great weeping. Also those who went with them wept greatly. And Sarah caught hold of her son Isaac. She held him in her arms, and she embraced him and continued to weep with him. And Sarah said, Who knoweth if after this day I will ever see thee again? And they still wept together. Abraham, Sarah, and Isaac, and all those that accompanied them on the road wept with them. And Sarah afterward turned away from her son, weeping bitterly. And all her men, servants, and maid servants returned with her to the tent. And Abraham went with Isaac, his son, to bring him up as an offering before the Lord, as he had commanded him. And Abraham took two of his young men with him, Ishmael, the son of Hagar, and Eleazar his servant and they went together with them and whilst they were walking in the road the young men spoke these words to themselves and Ishmael said to Eleazar now my father Abraham is going with Isaac to bring him up for a burnt offering to the Lord as he commanded him and when he returneth he will give unto me all that he possesses to inherit after him for I am his firstborn and Eleazar answered Ishmael and said, Surely Abraham did cast thee away with thy mother and swear that thou should have not inherited anything of all his possessions and to whom he gave all that he has with all his treasures, but unto me, his servant, who has been faithful in his house, who has served him night and day and has done all that he desired me. To me will he bequeath after his death all that he possesses. Man. And whilst Abraham was proceeding with his son Isaac along the road, Satan came and appeared to Abraham in the figure of a very aged yeah, man. That's my favorite. <laughs> humble and of contrite spirit, he approached Abraham and said to him, Art thou silly or brutish that thou go to do this thing this day to thy only son? For God gave thee a son in thy later days, in that old age. And wilt thou go and slaughter him this day because he committed no violence? And wilt thou cause the soul of thy only son to perish from the earth? Doest thou not know and understand that this thing cannot be from the Lord? For the Lord cannot do unto man such evil upon earth to say to him, Go slaughter thy child. <laughs> and Abraham heard this and knew that it was a word of Satan. Who had endowed, endowed to, endeavored. endeavored to draw him aside from the way of the Lord. But Abraham would not hearken to the voice of Satan. And Abraham rebuked him so that he went away. And Satan returned and came to Isaac. And he appeared to Isaac in the figure of a young man, comely and well favored. He approached Isaac and said to him, Dost thou not know and understand? that thy silly father bringeth thee to the slaughter this day for naught. Now therefore, my son, do not listen nor attend to him, for he is a silly old man. And let not thy precious soul and beautiful figure be lost from the earth. And Isaac heard this, and he said unto Abraham, Hast thou heard, my father, that which this man has spoken? Even thus has he spoken. And Abraham answered, his son Isaac said to him, Take heed of him and do not listen to his words, nor attend to him, for he is Satan, endeavoring to draw us aside this day from the command of God, from the commands of God. <coughs> and Abraham still rebuked Satan, and Satan went from them. And seeing he could not prevail over them, he hid himself from them, and he went and passed before them in the road, and he transformed himself to a large brook of water in the road and Abraham and Isaac and his two young men reached that place and they saw a brook large and powerful as the mighty waters 
And they entered the brook and passed through it, and the waters at first reached their legs. And they went deeper in the brook, and the waters reached up to their necks. And they were all terrified on account of the water. And whilst they were going over the brook, Abraham recognized that place. And he knew that there was no water there before. And Abraham said to his son Isaac, I know this place in which there was no brook nor water. Now, therefore, it is this Satan who does all this to us, to draw us aside this day from the commands of God. He was locked in, cuz. And Abraham <laughs> rebuked him and said unto him, The Lord rebuke thee, O Satan. Be gone from us, for we go by the commands of God. And Satan was terrified at the voice of Abraham. And he went away from them. And the place again became dry land as it was at first. And Abraham went with Isaac toward the place that God had told him. And on the third day, Abraham lifted up his eyes and saw the place at a distance which God had told him of. And a pillar of fire appeared to him that reached from the earth to the heaven, to heaven, and a cloud of glory upon the mountain, and the glory of the Lord was seen in the cloud. And Abraham said to Isaac, My son, doest thou see in that mountain which we perceive at a distance, that which I see upon it? And Isaac answered and said unto his father, I see, and lo, a pillar of fire and a cloud, and the glory of the Lord is seen upon the cloud. And Abraham knew that his son Isaac was accepted before the Lord for a burnt offering. And Abraham said unto Eleazar and unto Ishmael his son, Do you also see that which we see upon the mountain, which is at the distance? And they answered and said, We see nothing more than like the other mountains of the earth. And Abraham knew that they were not accepted before the Lord to go with them. And Abraham said to them, Abide ye here with the ass, whilst I and Isaac, my son, will go to yonder mount and worship there before the Lord and then return to you. And Eleazar and Ishmael remained in that place as Abram had commanded. And Abraham took wood for a burnt offering and placed it upon his son Isaac. And he took the fire and the knife and they both went to that place. And when they were going along, Isaac said to his father, Behold, I see here the fire and wood. And where then is the lamb that is to be burnt offering before the Lord? And Abraham said to his son Isaac, saying, The Lord has made choice of thee, my son, to be a perfect burnt offering instead of the lamb. And Isaac said unto his father, I will do all that the Lord spoke to thee with joy and cheerfulness of heart. <laughs> and Abraham said unto Isaac his son, Is there in thy heart any thought or counsel concerning this, which is not proper? Tell me, my son, I pray thee, O my son, conceal it not from me. And Isaac answered his father Abraham and said unto him, O my father, as the Lord liveth and as thy soul liveth, there is nothing in my heart to cause me to de deviate neither to the right or to the left from the word that has spoken to thee. Neither lamb, limb. Nor, neither la limb nor muscle has moved or stirred at this, nor is there in my heart any thought or evil counsel concerning this. But I, but I am of joyful and cheerful heart in this matter. And I say, blessed is the Lord, who this day chose me to be a burnt offering before him. And Abraham greatly rejoiced at the words of Isaac. And they went on and came together to that place that the Lord had spoken of. And Abraham approached the, and Abraham approached to build the altar in that place. And Abraham was weeping and Isaac took stones and mortar until they had finished building the altar. And Abraham took the wood and placed it in the order upon the altar which he had built. And he took his son Isaac and bound him in order to place in order to place him upon the wood which was upon the altar, to slay him for a burnt offering before the Lord. 
And Isaac said to his father, buy me securely and then place me upon the altar, lest I should turn and move and break loose from the force of the knife upon my flesh and thereby profane the burnt offering. And Abraham did so. And Isaac said to his father, O my father, when thou shalt have slain me and burnt me for an offering, take with thee that which shall remain of my ashes to bring to Sarah my mother and say to her, this is the sweet smelling savior of Isaac. But do not tell her this if she should sit near a well or upon any high place, at least she should cast her soul after me and die. And Abraham heard the words of Isaac, and he lifted up his voice and wept when Isaac spake these words. And Abraham's tears gushed down from Isaac, upon Isaac, his son, and Isaac wept bitterly. And he said to his father, Hasten thou, O my father, and do with me the will of the Lord. Our, the Lord our God, as he co commanded thee. And the hearts of Abraham and Isaac rejoiced at this thing which the Lord had commanded them. But the eye wept bitterly whilst the heart rejoiced. And Abraham bound his son Isaac and placed him on the altar with the wood. And Isaac stretched forth his neck upon the altar before his father. And Abraham stretched forth his hand to take the knife to slay his son as a burnt offering before the Lord. At that time, the angels of, of mercy came before the Lord and spake to him concerning Isaac, saying, O Lord, thou art a merciful and compassionate king over all that thou hast created in heaven and in earth, and thou supportest them all. Give therefore ransom and redemption instead of thy servant Isaac, and pity and have compassion upon Abraham and Isaac his son, who are this day performing thy commands. Hast thou seen, O Lord, how Isaac the son of Abraham thy servant is bound down to the slaughter like an animal? Now therefore, let thy pity be roused from, for them, O Lord. At that time, the Lord appeared upon Abraham and called to him from heaven and said to him, Lay not thy hand upon the lad, neither do thou anything unto him. For now I know that thou fearest God in performing this act, and in not withholding thy son, thy only son, from me. And Abraham lifted up his eyes and saw, behold, a ram was caught in a thicket by his horns. That was the ram which the Lord God had created in the earth in the day that he made heaven and earth. For the Lord had prepared this ram from that day to be a burnt offering instead of Isaac. This ram was advancing to Abraham when Satan caught hold of him and entangled his, stone, his horns in the thicket that he might not advance to Abraham in order that Abraham might slay his son. And Abraham, seeing the ram advancing to him and Satan withholding him, fetched him and brought him before the altar. And he loosened his son Isaac from, by, from his binding and he put the ram in his steed and Abraham killed the ram upon the altar and brought it up as an offering in the place of his son Isaac. And Abraham sprinkled some of the blood of the ram upon the altar and he ex exclaimed and said, this is, this is in the place of my son. And may this be considered this day as the blood of my son before the Lord. And all that Abraham did on this occasion by the altar, he would exclaim and say, this is the room of my son. And may it this day be considered before the Lord in the place of my son. And Abraham finished the whole of the service by the altar and the service was accepted before the Lord and was accounted as if it had been Isaac. And the Lord blessed Abraham and his seed on that day. And Satan went to Sarah, oh Lord have mercy. And Satan went to Sarah and he appeared to her in the figure of an old man, very humble and meek. And Abraham was yet engaged in the burnt offering before the Lord. And he said to her, dost thou not know all the work that Abraham has made with thine only son this day? For he took Isaac and built an altar and killed him and brought him up as a sacrifice upon the altar. And Isaac cried and wept before his father. 
but he looked not at him, neither did he give compassion over him. And Satan repeated these words, and he went away from her. And Sarah heard all the words of Satan, and she imagined him to be an old man from amongst the sons of men who had been with her son, and had come and told her these things. And Sarah lifted up her voice and wept and cried out bitterly on account of her son. And she threw herself upon the ground, and she was cast dust, and she cast dust upon her head, and she said, O oh, my son, Isaac, my son, O oh, that I had this day died instead of thee. And she continued to weep and said, It grieves me for thee, O oh, my son, my son Isaac, O oh, that I have died this day instead of in, this day in thy steed. And she still continued to weep and said, It grieves me for thee after that I have reared thee and have brought thee up. Now my joy is turned into mourning over thee. I had at, at that had a longing for thee and cried and prayed to God till I bear thee at 90 years old. And now hast thou served this day for the knife and the fire to be made an offering. But I console myself with thee, my son. It is being the word of the Lord, for thou doest perform the command of thy God. For who can transgress the word of our God? And whose hands is the soul of every living creature? Thou art just, O Lord our God, for all the works are good and righteous. For I also am rejoiced with thy word which thou doest command. And whilst my eye weepeth bitterly, my heart rejoiceth. And Sarah laid her head upon the bosom of one of her handmaids, and she became as a, still as a stone. She afterward rose up and went about making inquiries till she came to Hebron. And she inquired of all those who she met walking in the road, and no one could tell her what had happened to her son. And she came with her maid servants and men servants to Karethaba, which is Hebron. Do y'all hear that out there? I do. That's why I look behind the face. Uh, it sounds like, sound like it's coming closer. It does, doesn't it? Like a big feet. It do. Breaking. Breaking steel. Yeah. Head, you need a deer? I can't see no deer breaking. Is it the fire? You might have to snap crackle pops in the fire. Oh, Lord, that sounds a little further down. Well, it does. Way. Hey, it does. <laughs> hey, it does sound like something up there in the bushes. Lord of mercy. <laughs> hey, but that's okay. Let's read and rejoice, guys. Yeah, let's rejoice. Let's, yeah, let's rejoice let's, while, hey, let's I, rejoice. while our mind yeah, thinks so. Right. <laughs> hey, hey. Kerbeth Cur Arba, which is Hebron, and she asked concerning her son, and she remained there while she sent some of her servants to seek where Abraham had gone with Isaac. And they went to seek him in the house of Sh Shem and Eber, where he said he was going. <laughs> and they could not find him. And they sought throughout the land, and he was not there. And behold, Satan came to Sarah Damn, in the shape of an old man. And he came and stood before her, and he said unto her, I spoke falsely unto thee, for Abraham did not kill. For Abraham did not kill his son, and he is not dead. And when she heard the word, her joy was so exceedingly violent on account of her son that her soul went out through joy, and she died and was gathered to her people. Yes, he killed her. He killed her. And when Abraham had finished. And where Abraham had finished his service, he returned with his son Isaac to his young men. And they rose up and went together to Beersheba. And they came home. And Abraham sought for Sarah and could not find her. And he made inquiries concerning her. And they said to him, 
she went as far as Hebron to seek you both where he had gone, for thus was she informed. And Abraham and Isaac went to her, to Hebron, and when they found that she was dead, they lifted up their voices and wept bitterly over her. And Isaac fell upon his mother's face and wept over her. And he said, O oh, my mother, my mother, how hast thou left me? And where hast thou gone? O oh, how, how hast thou left me? And Abraham and Isaac wept greatly, and all their servants wept with them on account of Sarah. And they mourned over her a great and heavy mourning. Now that was a chapter right that there. Was, that was. Goodness <laughs> gracious, guys. Shoot, I was, uh, I was getting a little bit teary. <laughs> hey, hey, man. Yeah. That's, what, yeah. hey, that's Especially, a good thing. That's a good thing. Man, because this... Isaac said, "Hey, look, Dad, I'm locked in." He said, "Pops, listen. I done seen, I done seen you tell him to get out of here. Tell him, tell him get the hell out. Three different times, right in front of me. Hey, I'm locked in. When he I said, seen the water dissipate, I got you, Dad. Do it. He I, said, I, he I, said, Pops, hurry up. He said, he said, he said, hey, hey wrap hey. me tightly, because yeah. if when that night come to my flesh, I might get, I might get, I'm, I'm going to tweak. I might tweak out. <laughs> yeah, I'm, yeah, I'm, <laughs> I'm going to tweak. So make sure I'm secure, okay?" If I break loose, it's gonna profane what yeah, you gotta I do. I ain't trying to mess this up. I ain't trying to do that, Pop. The angels begged him not to do it. Said, angels Lord, of mercy say, show, show mercy on me. Say, Pops, so, please. We ain't trying to see we ain't that. Trying, we ain't trying to kill him like that. We ain't trying to see that. We, Pop, Pop, we want that dad. Pop, really. let out your mercy and your grace. All of it. He said, you're all mercy, all powerful grace. He said, man, <laughs> you right. That's, that's the one of the best boys you got down there, yeah. and I already know what Isaac's gonna do. He said he, he, gonna, he gonna go for all scale. But you, but you don't snuff him out, Dad. We ain't got nobody else. Uh, forge. Yep. Forge. Yep. Forge. Yep. Forge. Yep. Forge. Yep. Forge. All right. <clears throat> and the life of Sarah was <clears throat> one hundred and twenty-seven years, and Sarah died. And Abraham rose up from before his dead to seek a burial place to bury his woman, Sarah. And he went and spoke to the children of Sheth, the inhabitants of the land, saying, I am a stranger and a sojourner with you in your land. Give me possession of a burial place in your land that I may bury my dead from before me. And the children of Sheth said unto Abraham, Behold, the land is before you in the choice of our sepulchres. Bury your dead. For no man shall withhold you from burying your dead. And Abraham said unto them, If you are agreeable to this, go and entreat for me to Ephron, the son of Sokor, requesting that he may give me the cave of Machpelah, which is in the end of his field, and I will purchase it of him for whatsoever he desireth for it. And Ephron dwelt among the children of Heth, and they went and called for him. And he came before Abraham, and Ephraim said to Abraham, Behold, all you require for your servant, all you require your servant would do. And Abraham said, No, but I will buy the cave and the field which you have for value, in order that it may, may be for a possession of a burial place forever. And Ephraim answered and said, Behold, the field and the cave are before you. Give whatsoever you desire. And Abraham said, Only at full value will I buy it from your head. And from the hands of those that go in at the gate of your city, and from the hand of your seed forever. And Ephraim and all his brethren heard this, and Abraham weighed to Ephraim four hundred shekels of silver in the hands of Ephraim, in the hands of all his brethren. And Abraham wrote this transaction, and he wrote it, and testified it with four witnesses. And these are the names of the witnesses: Amagal, son of Abishna of the Hittite; Adikaram, son of Ashunak of the Hiva, Abdon, son of Akiryan, the Gamari, Bagdil, the son of Abudish, the Sidion. And Abraham took the book of the purchase and placed it in his treasures. And these are the words that Abraham wrote in the book, namely, that the cave in the field Abraham brought from Ephraim, the Hittite, and from his seed and from those that go out of his city and from their seed forever are to be a purchase to Abraham and to his seed and to those that go forth from his loins for a possession of a burial place forever. And he put a signet to it and testified it with witnesses. 
Oh, yeah. hold on a second. That's a receipt right there, guys. It is. You know, if, if hey, look, if you're ever making a serious purchase, something like this, I would refer to chapter 24 at verse 10 <laughs> to come up with a receipt. Uh, I think it was it. Twenty-four. Verse twenty-four. Yeah. Well, I think yeah. we're at eight. Well, I don't know. Oh yeah, we are at eight. Yeah, yeah. We are at eight. Somewhere near. We, yeah. No, we was past that too because you read about the. the you did the say uh, the, the receipt, so we are um, eleven. Eleven. And the field and the cave that was in it and all that place were made sure unto Abraham and to his seed after him from the children of Heth. Behold, it is before memory in Hebron which is in the land of Canaan. And after this, Abraham buried his mom and Sarah there, and that place and all its boundary became to Abraham and to his seed for a possession of a burial place. And Abraham buried Sarah with pomp, as observed at the interment of kings. And she was buried in very fine and beautiful garments. <clears throat> now her coffin was Shem, his sons Eber and Abimelech, together with Anar, Ashkol, and Mamre, and all the grandees of the land follow her coffin. And the days of Sarah were 127 years and she died. And Abraham made a great and heavy mourning. And he performed the rites of mourning for seven days. And all the inhabitants of the land comforted Abraham and Isaac, his son, on the account of Sarah. And when the days of their mourning passed by, Abraham sent away his son Isaac. And he went to the house of Shem and Eber to learn the ways of the Lord and his instructions. And Abraham remained there three years. At that time, Abraham rose up with all his servants, and he went and returned homeward to Beersheba. And Abraham and all his servants remained in Beersheba. And at the revolution of the year, Abimelech, king of the Palestine, died in that year. He was 193 years old at his death. And Abraham went with his people to the land of the Palestine, and they comforted the whole household and all his servants. And then he returned, and he then returned and went home. And it was after the death of Abimelech that the people of Gerar took Bimelech, his son, and he was only 12 years old. And they made him lying in the place of his father. And they called his name Abimelech after the name of his father. For thus was it their custom to do in Gerar. And Abimelech reigned instead of Abimelech, his father, and he sat upon his throne. And Lot, the son of Haran, also died in those days, in the 39th year of the life of Isaac, in all the days that Lot lived, were 140 years, and he died. And these are the children of Lot that were born to him by his daughters. Damn. The name of his firstborn was Moab, and the name of the second was ben Amon. And the two sons of Lot went and took themselves women from the land of Canaan, and they bore children to them, and the children of Moab were Ed, Mayan, Tarsus, and Kunbil, four sons. These are fathers to the children of Moab unto this day. And all the families of the children of Lot went to dwell wherever they should light upon, for they were fruitful and increased abundantly. And they went and built themselves cities in the land where they dwelt, and they called the names of the cities which they built after their own names. And Nahor, the son of Terah, brother to Abraham died in those days in the 40th year of the life of Isaac and all the days of Nahor were, were 172 years and he died and was buried in Haran and when Abraham heard that his brother had died he grieved sadly and he mourned of his brother many days and Abraham called for Eliezer his head servant to give him orders concerning his house and he came and stood before him and Abraham said behold I am old I do not know the day of my death for I am advanced in days, and I therefore rise up, go forth, and do not take a woman for my son from this place, from this land, from the daughters of Canaan, amongst whom we dwell. But go to my land and to my birthplace, and take from this a woman for my son. And Yahya Elohim of heaven and earth, who took me from my father's house and brought me to this place, said unto me, To your seed will I give this land for inheritance forever. He will send his angel before you and prosper your way, that you may attain a woman for my son, from my family, and from my father's house. And the servant answered his master, his Adonai, Abraham, and said, Behold, 
I go to your birthplace and to your father's house and take a woman for your son from there. But if the woman be not willing to follow me to this land, shall I take your son back to the land of your birthplace? And Abraham said to him, Take heed that you bring not my son hither again. For Yahweh before whom I have walked will send his angel before you and prosper your way. And Eliezer did as Abraham ordered him, and Eliezer swore unto Abraham his master upon this matter. And Eliezer rose up and took ten camels of the camels of his master, and ten men from his Adonai's servants with him. And they rose up and went to Haran, the city of Abraham and Nahor, in order to fetch a woman for Isaac, the son of Abraham. And while they were going, Abraham sent to his house, sent to the house of Shem and Eber, and they brought from thence his son Isaac. And Isaac came to his father's house to Beersheba, while Eliezer and his men came to Iran. And they stopped in the city by the watering place, and he made his camels to kneel down by the water, and they remained there. And Eliezer, Abraham's servant, prayed and said, O Adonai Elohim of Abraham, send me, I pray you, good speed this day, and show kindness unto my Adonai, that you shall appoint this day a woman for my Adonai's son from his family. And he hired hearken to the voice of Eliezer for the sake of his servant Abraham. And he happened to meet with the daughter of Bethuel, the son of Milcah, the woman of Nahor, brother to Abraham. And Eliezer came to her house. And Eliezer related to them all his concerns and that he was Abraham's servant. And they greatly rejoiced at him. And they all blessed Yahweh who brought this thing about, and they gave him Ribka, the daughter of Bethuel, for a woman for Isaac. And the young woman was of very comely appearance. She was a virgin, and Ribka was ten years old in those days. And Bethuel and the bond and his children made a feast on that night, and Eliezer and his men came and ate and drank and rejoiced there on that night. And Eliezer rose up in the morning, he and the men that were there with him, and he called to the whole household of Bethuel, saying, Send me away, that I may go to my master. And they rose up and sent away Ribka, her nurse to Bora, the daughter of Uts. And they gave her silver and gold, men servants and maid servants, and they blessed her. And they sent Eliezer away with his men, and the servants took Ribka, and he went and returned to his Adonai, to the land of Canaan. And Isaac took Rebekah, and she became his woman, and he brought her to the tent. And Isaac was four years old when he took Rebekah, the daughter of his uncle Bethuel, for a woman. Dang, Isaac. <laughs> How old was she? Ten. Ten. <laughs> Ten. Dang, Isaac. He was 40. Oh, <laughs> guys. <laughs> hey, man. Goodness. Goodness gracious, that's why men rejoice when they have a masculine child. Hey, rejoice! Hey, listen. Marry, marry. Are the masculine children. We ain't got to give them up to the men at ages 10. 10 years old. This was Laban's daughter? This is the daughter of his uncle. Oh. Beth Will. Okay, 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 okay. So his niece? The daughter of his uncle, so his cousin. His cousin. Ten year old cousin. Straight <laughs> cousin next. <laughs> Go ahead, Roman. <laughs> Anybody want to re recap? Um <laughs> that that part we don't want to recap. No, that was, that was <laughs> Um, other than Abraham telling his servant not to uh, take a woman from the land they were in, but from his people, from his land or from his people, he specifically didn't want his, want his son to have women from anybody else but from his land and his people. Right. Nothing, nothing with the Canaanites. Nothing with the Canaanites. He said, fluff them. Get them out of here. He said, bring them a woman from me, from my, my, my pops. So he knew her. Did they have a child right away? No, they didn't have a child. Right. He remember, just wanted to consummate the, the marriage. Remember, she was barren for a while. Rebecca? Mm hmm. She was barren before she even had Isaac. Okay. And uh, I mean, not Isaac, Esau and Jacob. Okay. Huh? Chapter twenty-five. Oh, wait! Before you before you get to it, uh, 
Well, it's actually gonna be explained here. I'm, well, I'm a, I'll share it after you finish reading the chapter. Uh, yeah, because we'll go over it. And it was at that time that Abraham again took a wife in his old age. And her name was <laughs> Ketra. That's three of them, maybe. From the land of Canaan. <laughs> and she bare unto him Zimran, Juxan, Medan, Median, Ishbak, and Shuak, being six sons. And the children of Zimran were Abnan, Malich, and Naram. And the sons of Juxan were Sheba and Dedan. And the sons of Medan were Amida, Joab, Jochi, Elisha, and Notch. And the sons of Median were Ephan, Ephir, Shnot, Abida, and Alida. <laughs> Sorry. I was trying to hold it in, but it got me there. <laughs> and the sons of Ishbak were Makiro, Beodua, and Tater. And the sons of Shuak were Bilad, Bildad, Bildad, Mamdad, Manun, Munan, Munan, and Meban. And all these, all these are the families of the children of Kithra, Katura, Katura, the Can Cananish, Kantish woman, which she bare unto Abraham, the Hebrew, Abram. Is that Abraham? Yeah, Abraham, the mm -hmm. Hebrew. And Abraham sent all these away, and he gave them gifts, and they went away from his son Isaac to dwell wherever they should find a place. <laughs> <laughs> get out of here! <laughs> he said, don't you know I got three wives? I got three. Get out of here. Get out of here. <laughs> and all these went to the mountain at the east, and they built themselves six cities in which they dwell unto the state. <laughs> But the children of Sheba and Dedan, children of Jokshan, with their children, did not dwell with their brethren in their cities, and they journeyed and encamped in the countries of wilderness unto this day. And the children of Median, son of Abraham, went to the east of the land of Cush, and they there found a large valley in the eastern country, and they remained there and built a city, and they dwelt therein. That is the land of Median until this day. And Median dwelt in the city which he built, he and his five sons, and all belonging to him. And these are the names of the sons of Median according to their names and their cities. Ephan, Ephir, Shanak, Abida, and Alida, El Elda. Jeez. And the sons of Epha were Methak, Meshar, Avi, and... All right, chapter 25, verse 7. Cap, 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 cap. Capper? Yeah, you're at, um, actually at verse tw uh, 12. Verse 12? Yeah. All right, here we go. And the sons of Eph and... Jeez. Were <laughs> Methak, Meshar, Avi, and Tezuna. And the sons of... Ephir were Ephron, Zer, Alron, and Meden. And the sons of Shanat were Reuel, Rakim, Azi, Ayojib, and Alad. And the sons of. <coughs> oh, God bless you. And the Thank sons you. of Abida were Chur, Malud, Kururi, Malushi. And the sons of Elda were Miker. <laughs> <laughs> And Reba, and Malshia, and Makiyahu, Makiyahu, and Gabol. These are the names of the Midianites, according to their families. And afterward, the families of Midian spread throughout the land of Midian. And these are generations of Ishmael, the son of Abraham, whom Hagar, Sarah's handmaid, bare unto Abraham. And Ishmael took a wife from the land of Egypt. Her name was Reba. 
the same as Mariba. And Reba, <laughs> <laughs> definitely a trend here with the names. <laughs> you were sure. And Reba bear on the Ishmael, Neboith, Kidar, Adbil, and Midsam, and their sister Basmath. Basmati. <laughs> and Ishmael cast away his wife Reba, and she went from him and returned to Egypt to the house of her father. House of yeah, of her father, and she dwelt there, for she had been very bad in the sight of Ishmael and in the sight of his father Abraham. And Ishmael afterward took a wife from the land of Canaan, and her name was Malchuth, and she bare unto him Nishma, Duma, Massa, Massa, Shadad, Tima, Eter, Napish, and Kedma. These are the sons of Ishmael, and these are, and these are their names, being twelve princes according to their nations. And the families of Ishmael afterwards spread forth, and Ishmael took his children and all the property that he gained, together with the souls of his household and all belonging to him, and they went to dwell where they should find a place. And they went and dwelt near the wilderness of. Paran, and their dwelling was from Havila unto Shur, unto Shur, that is before Egypt, as thou comest toward Assyria. And Ishmael and his son dwelt in the land, and they had children born to them, and they were fruitful and increased abundantly. And these are the names of the sons of the boys, and the first born of Ishmael, Mend, Send, Mayan, and the sons of Kedar were Eloin, Kez, Kezem, Shemad, and Eli. And the sons of Adbil were Chemad and Jeben, and the sons of Misam were Ab. Abdia, Abdimelech, and Yush. These are the families of the children of Reba, the wife of Ishmael, and the sons of Mishma, the sons of Ishmael were Shemu, Zikarion, and Obed, and the sons of Duma were Zed, Eli, Matchman, <laughs> and a man. <laughs> this is, I'm just struggling pronouncing these. And the sons of Massa were Melon, Mula, Abedadon, Abedadon, and the sons of Chadad were Azur, Minzar, and Ebedmelech. And the sons of Tim Tima were Sir, Sidon, and Yakol. And the sons of Yatur were Merith, Yaish, Alio, and Pakhoth. And the sons of Napish were Abedamed, Abed tamed. Abi, Yash, and Mir. And the sons of Kedma were Talib, Tashti, and Amir. These were the children of Malchuth, the wife of Ishmael, according to their families. All these are the families of Ishmael, according to their generations. And they dwelt in those lands wherein they had built themselves cities unto this day. And Rebekah, the daughter of Bethuel, the wife of Abraham's son Isaac, was barren in those days. She had no offspring. Isaac dwelt with his, with his father in the land of Canaan. And the Lord was with Isaac. And Arpashad, the son of Shem, the son of Noah, died in those days, in the 48th year of the life of Isaac.
and all the days that Arpshad lived were 438 years and he died. We stopped there, but um, so that the the what was your name? Uh, the lady that uh, Isaac put away, Ishmael. He put her name is Ishmael. Was, uh, Rib Re Reba? Re Reba. Is that the one that the, the, the yeah. nail in the tent? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That was that nail in the tent that Abe yeah, said to get, get out. Get her out of Dodge. So keep in mind, families don't separate if you want a great nation. They don't. They don't. They stick together. They stick together. Build cities. And you choose your wife yeah. wisely. Very wisely. Very wisely. You have to. And if you get a hold of a bad wife, Give her give, back. Give yeah. her back quick. Get back to where you come get from. Get that nail. To hell. Get out of here. I don't need no more nails from there. Hey, get out of here. Nail. I don't need another nail. Yeah, but these nails aren't for your pleasure. No. These are for to continue God's creation and his work. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Thus we've read thus far. Yeah, that is very, very we're, true. We're, you know, we're in, the, we're in uh, Jasher. Moving forward, guys. Thanks for tuning in today for our podcast. And uh, subscribe and like and comment below if you have any uh, comments or suggestions. Any, you know. Thank you. Peace. Peace.